Uh, let's have a look at YouTube. Nothing good on from Condell, nothing from Thunderfoot. What's this? Ian Juby. I may need some alcohol for this. Two sec. There's gonna be a lot of that during this. Um, right. In GB, the walrus of misinformation, uh, the Wallazoo creationist. The man behind the Travelling Creation Museum in Canada has put a video called The Dark Side of Darwinism. Now, Mr. GB, do you know what? I'm not going to call you Mr. GB. I'm going to borrow a name from one of my favourite users. <coughs> now, Mr. BB. Now, Mr. BB, uh, I don't know whether you are aware of, of what Darwinian evolution actually is. Now, you start off. Because um, I'm going to have to go over this. It's 28 minutes. I can't really go over everything. But you start off going on about how people have murdered for different reasons and how we shouldn't uh, hold people in that specific group responsible. I was like, bravo, Mr. Mr. GB. I thought, for once, we're actually going to get some reason and uh, reasonability out of you. But no, that is the... Uh, the past may going down. Instead, we have the idea logic of ideas have consequences. Well, of course, it, some ideas have consequences, but some of, some of them are positive as well as negative. Um, again, you can't just say idea is wrong, negative because there's been some negative repercussions. You have to weigh the ball, weigh them both. You also have to see if they be up to any sort of empirical data or fact. But of course that isn't Mr. Doobie style, uh, sorry, Mr. Booby style. Um, now Mr. Booby has um, then goes into his spiel about three serial killers, two of which I'm going to get into now. He goes into the Columbine killers in which they talk about natural selection. Now natural selection is not killing people. Nor is it, it it don't know is it eugenics, nor is it anything like that. Natural selection is basically nature choosing your species to die out. It means that there is not an adaptation your your particular species uh, has discovered. Therefore, you're going to be sick because you've not adapted to that particular event. Like for example, let's say for example a, a meteor hits tomorrow. Uh, the idea of something like deep impact is that the whole human race would die out. Well, no, they wouldn't. There'd be some that would die out, but there'd be some that would adapt to it. That is evolution. We adapt to our environment. It is not we take sh shotguns and, sh and shoot people. That is murder. There is a difference. Then he goes into Jeffrey Dahmer. Now, now Jeffrey Dahmer, Mr. BB, if you don't know, uh, blood people in the, in the gay club scene would take them home would kill them rape, would rape them kill them and then would eat their brains you're going to take advice on anything from Jeffrey Dharma are you going to take uh, ethical uh, you know, Advice on fe fem female rights from Peter Cliff next. Are you going to take um, your child rearing rights from Mary Hill next to him? Where do we get here, Mr. Booby? But then we get we, we get into the real real job. You said what I just described is gold. That is nothing. That is the tiny speck on the anus of God compared to what is coming up. This is this is the full blown torture in the face. This is basically like getting tea bagged by Mr T for for eternity compared to that. Okay? 
What we have from Mr. BB and a couple of his friends, all of whose names I don't care about because what they say is crap. Basically, they go into the effects of the, the, the effects of Darwinism. Now, again, the, what Mr. Booby doesn't understand is the difference between uh, Darwinian evolution and social Darwinism. There's a difference behind that. Now, not only does he do a guilt by association fallacy here, he, he also breaks Godwin's law and his appeal to consequence. All three of which are logical fallacies. So, bravo, Mr. D, not only did you close one logical fallacy, you closed three. And let's explain how you did. Let's do the appeal to consequence. You said in your in your quote that uh, the Nazis, I mean, let's not see how that's going to be told, that's coming in a minute. The Nazis did eugenics programs and how eugenics programs were, were done by uh, Darwin's cousin. Darwin's cousin was, was, was positing social Darwinism. He was not uh, dealing with Darwin evolution. Social Darwinism was a, a social program which was an offshoot of actual Darwinism. There is a difference. Okay? Secondly, it's Godwin's law. So, so let's not get into that. Thirdly, it's an appeals consequence. It's in, oh, well, these things happen because uh, Darwin, because evolution is true. It isn't. Hitler was a new, yes, well, he was a eugenicist. Well, eugenics does not come out of um, evolution per se. It comes out of a certain mindset that says that we, that we, we have one pure species and we have one impure species. That is not what is in Darwin evolution. Darwin evolution does not say that there is one species that is more pure than the other. It just says that how things diverge and could to evolve to adapt to their various environments. It does not have anything to do with how um, how how species how one particular species of a, a subspecies of a particular species is is inferior to that or a particular race within that species, which isn't even important. It's just pigment on skin, or it's just um, genetic, um, genetic family ge genetics. That's all it is. Now the thing with Hitler is that he believed in the idea, as posited by Nietzsche, not by Darwin, by Nietzsche, the idea of man and Superman. He believed the the um, he believed in the super race. He believed in creating this 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 pure super race. Okay, that's what he believed in. Okay, even Nietzsche could have foreseen what what Hitler would have done with that. Okay, that shows you you don't know what you understand. Okay, and you're trying to condemn every person who believes in Darwin evolution, whether they be theist or atheist, as somebody who would condemn that sort. Of, then you do something which I find absolutely despicable as somebody who's an ex-atheist slash agnostic. You tell atheist agnostics that because they don't have a holy book to, to go to, that they're going to, they have no reason to withhold on, on doing eugenics programs. I can assure you, Mr. Booby, as an ex-atheist stroke agnostic, that I never committed one murder I never raped anybody, and I did other stuff, but that's because I was out of control and I was a teenager. It was not because I was because I had no morals. Okay, there are plenty of people out there who ha who don't believe in a god, or uh, and are uh, atheists, strong agnostics, who are good, moral, upstanding citizens. Don't murder anybody. Don't bother anybody. Don't don't hurt anybody. Don't don't you know, play on day. What you were doing is guilt by association. And I find that frankly sickening for a man who proposes himself to be a man of God. Okay? What you are is a parasite on the speckle of of life, Mr. Booby. And trust me, we're going to get to the second part where you upload it. Now, this is this is part one, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm, and I'm sorry that I've uh, wasted your time like this, but trust me, the second time is, pro is probably going to be even worse. So rub your hands together, get some popcorn, because boy, oh boy, I'll be looking forward to that.